small business innovation requires planning and flexibility to stay ahead of the flock. Part of being an innovative business is being on top of your forward planning while always retaining the flexibility to react to unexpected events, to cash in on any opportunities that arise, minimize harm from an adverse event, or even turn it to your advantage. For 86-year-old Queensland Egg Farmers Cooperative Sunny Queen, a couple of standout opportunities arose in 2016 to turn events to its benefit. The first was the establishment in March of a national code on what is defined by free range, with the federal and state governments adopting a national standard on egg labeling, under which free range eggs can come from farms holding up to 10,000 birds per hectare. Some animal activist and consumer groups disputed this number, preferring a voluntary code developed by the CSIRO that put a maximum outdoor stocking density at 1,500 hens per hectare. The second event was an early year assessment of the effect of the rapidly rising Australian dollar, which surged almost 14% against the US dollar in just three months, on the company's fledgling Asian export business. With the stocking density numbers, we're not so fussed by the number chosen. We have ranges that are 10,000 birds per hectare and some that are 1,500 per hectare, says Sunny Queen Chief Executive John O'Hara. To us, free range simply means that all the birds have access to roam whenever they want to in daylight hours, they choose when they want to go out and come in. Ultimately we think the consumer will be the judge of rats best. But as a leading egg producer, we saw a great opportunity during that debate to set out our philosophy. We created an ad campaign with a chicken sitting on a king-size bed, outdoors, with the tag a girl needs her space. That was a huge success, says O'Hara. Similarly, when the surging Australian dollar and the high cost of local inputs began to impinge on Sunny Queen's new Asian export markets, the company had only been exporting since 2015, O'Hara and his team took the opportunity to take a really close look at the market. We found that our organic eggs were actually a product that Asian consumers found unique, particularly given our traceability and being a free-range producer and Australia being a food-safe country. We found an opportunity to promote our organic brand as our umbrella brand in Asian markets, and that has really turned that business around. That allowed us to capitalize on that situation by making our organic eggs a premium product, says O'Hara. For Tom Griffith, co-founder of premium health food company Emma and Tom's, the unexpected event of the year followed from an expected event, the intensification of millennials' dissatisfaction with added sugar and general consciousness of what they put into their mouths. We certainly see this questioning by millennials, this desire to be absolutely certain of what it is they're consuming, and innovation to meet that really drives our business, says Griffith. But what I did not expect to see this year was a lot of inferior product coming onto the market to try to cash in on this trend. Emma and Tom's can stand up to these attacks because of its market status, says Griffith, and because it has the scale to innovate quickly. Our new blue coconut water, which is made with blue spirulina, went from an idea to finished product in about a month. We have the flexibility to respond really quickly. Our new range of no-added-sugar-flavored milks is an even bigger innovation, in fact we think it's a game-changer for us. But the key to our market is that millennial consumers are very discriminating and they know when innovation is being done for its own sake, he says. South Australian company Makers Empire which has created what it says is the world's easiest to use 3D printing software for the education market, which it sells in Australia, the US, Hong Kong and South Korea, did not expect to see its software starring in a government advertising campaign for the National Innovation and Science Agenda, under the title, Welcome to the Ideas Boom. But while many startups would kill for unsolicited publicity of this kind, co-founder Anthony Choi says truly cashing in on it is another thing altogether. 
The ad featured us as an innovative company, but it did not really highlight what our expertise actually was. As it happened, we had just decided to switch from a field sales model, where we would go out to schools and demonstrate the software in person, to an inside sales model, where sales are handled remotely, where we do the demonstrations by conference call. So while people's awareness of our company has increased significantly on the back of that ad campaign, to capitalize on that we really needed to develop that inside sales model fully, ASAP, says Choi. But the accelerated switch of sales model paid off, he says. By switching to the inside sales model, we've quadrupled our revenue in the last five months. It's fair to say we didn't expect that. This content was produced in association with NAB. Dot.